Okay, and here you can see uh, I didn't end up using that uh, fuel filter. That thing was just way too big to get in there. Uh, but what I did was able to find was this clear plastic tubing. Um, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if it's fuel resistant or not. Um, this is probably some leftover stuff. My roommate was, uh, my old roommate was building a motorcycle, and I do remember him using this stuff for his fuel line. So it might be fuel resistant. I uh, put one end of it into a can of gasoline for about five minutes, and it came out the same as it went in. So uh, at least for the time being, uh, this is good enough, and uh, we can uh, test everything, test the throttle linkage, and. Uh, look at the clutch and all that so uh, that's what I'm gonna do I'll get in here and I'll uh, fill up the gas tank and uh, we'll see if this thing uh, fires over I mean it should we ran it once but we'll see how it works with the uh, jack shaft and the clutch and all that so uh, just stick around and uh, we'll get that we'll get this thing going right, here's the fuel line again I do have some uh, gasoline in there and it's been in there for about five minutes while I did a few other things to get this ready to start. Uh, hasn't eaten up this uh, tubing or anything, uh, so I guess it's okay, at least for now. Uh, but I did bring it kind of out here, outside, away from the cars a little bit in case there is a fuel leak or something. I certainly don't want this to catch on fire. But what I was doing was coming in here and taking the cover, the chain shroud, off because I still had to snug down uh, this crank bolt for the uh, clutch assembly. And uh, so yeah, so now I guess we're uh, ready to see if this thing will run. So uh, let me reposition the camera and we'll uh, give it a pull. All right, and just like the manual said, we'll set it to choke, make sure our switch is off, give it a few pulls to make sure we get gasoline into the carburetor. There's no primer bulb on these engines, so what we'll do, set the throttle up just a hair, turn the switch on, let's see what happens. Wants to run, let's try that again. Let's try half choke. It's still on its kickstand, yep. We'll just let that warm up for just a second. You know what? 
I think it's time to put the rear chain on this thing and see how it rides. So let me go do that and then we'll uh, see how it all works. But it was a good test, so that's good news. Right, just a real quick short vid here. You can see I got my rear chain on. Zoom down here. See there's the chain tensioner with the spring. Goes up all the way there to the jack shaft. And there's the clutch chain and jack shaft. So we'll just put the cover on and then we'll be ready to uh, take it for a spin. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out for a ride. I just took it, I just took it for a little bit of a shakedown run, uh, but now I'm gonna do it on camera. And just a couple things, I, I fix up some loose ends here. This is the old clutch cable from the two side board. Uh, the old kill switch, which I'm going to try and uh, uh, wire into this motor. Uh, but that's it. And uh, so, yeah, we'll just see if we, we'll get it started. And uh, take it for a spin. Give it a little gas. That's it, it works. Uh, I don't have anywhere to put my feet right now, but uh, I'll make some foot pegs on there. Uh, but it works. Uh, the motor is, I would say, a little underpowered. It takes a, takes a little bit to get it going, but I had it going uh, at least as fast as that little two-stroke motor would go, which I actually did clock myself with that at about 30 miles an hour. So it's about the same and you don't have to pedal. And uh, it actually rides a lot better, it coasts a lot better than that little two-stroke engine did. So, all in all, it's a good little bike. Just needs a few refinements, but other than that, it's finished.